Hello, folks. My name is Ryan Pyle, and these are the COVID calls on my Instagram Live. How are you all doing today? I'm coming to you from Istanbul. No change there. Maybe no change ever. I think that uh, while I'm in Istanbul, I'll just keep doing these calls. And then when I can leave Istanbul, I'll probably stop them. And that is how I will justify all of that. Look, today on the show, I've got a good friend and uh, well, he's just a friend and we work together. Uh, his name is Jamie Bilbao and he's a celebrity chef and television producer and television host. And um, Jamie and I actually produced a TV show together called Granny Knows Best. And um, it was on Tencent and he was the host and we both executive produced it. And um, yeah, I'm really proud of that series. And it was fun working with Jamie on that. And today I'm going to catch up with Jamie and, uh, and just have a chat with him because it's been about, uh, well, we talk privately quite often, but it's been about um, a good month or two since we've talked uh, publicly. So why not just talk publicly? So we got, uh, hey, Ryan, I'm starting season two of Extreme Treks tonight. Nice. Kevin Zum, just saw you on TV. Also nice. Great stuff. Okay, guys, I'm going to bring in Jamie in just one second. Um, as always, if you guys are enjoying the COVID calls, every single COVID call I have ever done is on my YouTube channel, which is Ryan J. Pyle. Yes, someone beat me to the Ryan Pyle YouTube channel name, so I had to put a J in there just to get it done. But I got it done eventually, and that's my YouTube channel, Ryan J. Pyle, where you can watch all 60-plus COVID calls now, as well as full episodes of Tough Rides China, Tough Rides India, and Tough Rides Brazil. So with no further ado, let's bring in my friend and colleague and co-collaborator and celebrity chef, me Bilbao, coming to us live from Lantau Island in Hong Kong. Let's find out how good his internet access is. Boom. There he is. How you doing, how buddy? You doing? Yeah. Yeah, keeping keeping busy. Good to see you too. What uh, what time is it in Hong Kong? Eight p.m. Just walk the dogs. Just and, walk uh, the dogs. You're so domesticated. Just walk the dogs, down for a cat. Very nice. And what are you nightcapping with? A uh, heavy heavy uh, water. Uh, I'm on the water as well. It's only three in the afternoon here in Istanbul. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, it's three o'clock. <laughs> three o'clock is on. Corn, a quarantine three o'clock is like we'll a rape. We'll see how this call goes. You might, you might need to start early tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, look, you know, you and I had a chat a couple of weeks ago. It was quite nice, quite fun. Um, you know, where are you now? What's going on? What's it like in Hong Kong? Um, what's work like? I mean, let's just, everyone, Everyone, I already interviewed Jamie. We already did the back talk about who he was and how he got into television and how he learned his Chinese and his love of food. And uh, obviously, he's an incredible chef, celebrity chef, television producer, television host. You guys all know this if you watched our first round of these conversations. But uh, how are you doing at the moment? I'm good. Uh, before we start off, congratulations on, on? Uh, Treks. The, the new series of Extreme Treks. Oh, uh, wait. I'm very proud. Expedition Asia. Uh, Expedition Asia, my bad. Uh, Expedition Asia. Oh! On Discovery I Channel. I wanted to give you the opportunity to say the right name. Yeah. Expedition Asia. Well done. I was with you when you were doing uh, pre production on that, and uh, just an incredible turnaround, uh, and enjoyed watching the way you worked and the way you uh, built up to the series, and now to see it. Uh, actually, I was there for the Hong Kong episode as well. Uh, you were. You brought some very important single malt whiskey up to the to Sunset Peak on Lantau and saved us all from a, a night of was, no alcohol. Uh, that was a good episode. That so, was. Yeah, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. And it's good to see all the people uh, tuning in all around Asia and enjoying the show. So. I hope so. To you. I, thank you. Thank you very much, Jamie. It's very kind of you. Uh, as everyone knows, I pretty much just make the same show all the time. It's just me in different parts of the world. 
talking about basically the same stuff, but I'm in different landscapes and meeting different people. So that's the, hopefully the enjoyment of it. Yes, you're, you're being modest. Um, uh, how am I doing? I'm, I'm all right. Um, touch wood, things are in Hong Kong are pretty stable at the moment. Um, so I'm in a, in a funny stage really, whereby everyone who has a normal job is back to work. Um, <laughs> and I think that's something that we're going to start seeing more and more around the world as, as fingers crossed, uh, we move out of this situation. Sure. Uh, people who have normal jobs who have maybe been working from home over this period will go back maybe in a staggered, um, return to uh return to work but for us freelancers and especially in the tv making industry it's a little bit more complicated than that especially when we do travel tv um right. we're kind of a little bit like the travel industry we're going to be one of the last to get back to yeah. uh, normality because we can't go anywhere to film uh and even if we can is it going to be is it going to be what people want to see necessarily when everyone's in masks and, and what we enjoy about travel TV is that kind of positivity that it, that it inevitably, inevitably brings. Right. So that's kind of where I am. Um, everyone around me has started to go back to work and I, oh, I'm trying to work out how I can create stuff from home uh, as I still can't travel. Yeah. It's uh, it's a tough situation, you know, like, I think it's funny, a lot of people, when, it, when everything is very normal, you know, you and I have quite exotic lives and we, we get to travel all around the world and make television and entertain people. That's our job. But, um, but when things go bad for us, things go really bad. <laughs> and, and, yeah. it makes, and it makes having a normal job seem like much more stable. Um, you, know, uh, low, you know, the highs are lower, but the, lower, the lows are also lower. Whereas, yeah, um, I think, you know, we thrive on, on firstly creating our own opportunities, but also when opportunities come along, uh, we're kind of ready and willing to jump on that plane and get out there and get into the field and start filming. So when that all dries up, um, that can get a little bit uh, worrying. Uh, so I just in the last couple of weeks, um, I've had two strong job offers that I wouldn't have even thought twice about uh, in the past. I would have just got on that plane and gone and filmed and, you know, I can't get into China. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about this. This is quite, I mean, this is tragic, but also quite hilarious. So uh, yeah, you were, you. you were telling, you were telling me this privately a few days ago. So you got a great job offer from a broadcaster in China to go and do a food and cooking show. And the money was good, and the the concept was good, and everything was great. But the problem is, is that China, the the borders with China have not opened yet to non Chinese passport holders. And of course, you're living in Hong Kong, so you are you're effectively stuck, and you can't do that job. Yeah, I got another one today. So, oh really? <laughs> it's like rubbing salt into the wound. Um, yeah. You know, we're lucky when you know, when these job opportunities come along, it's, it's an amazing thing. And, and to not be able to do it is even more painful. Um, so yeah, I've been exploring options on, on how to get into China, but it's looking pretty bleak at the moment. Just got to basically stay still, um, and wait for border controls to, to loosen. And, you know, it's funny, our job as well, like I, I've been talking recently to a production company about a global series. Um, and I was thinking if, if at each stop you've got to do 14 days quarantine, can you imagine how long that filming job is going to take? Yeah. Um, you know, this one, in, this one in China that was meant to be filming uh, this month, that was, uh, that was a two week, two, maybe three weeks of filming. But it would have turned out to be four weeks on top of that because you've got a month of quarantine either side right right um, so yeah that's that's another thing to to have to to think about right yeah i mean i'm not going anywhere until the whole 14 day quarantine thing is lifted and i don't mind well, taking a, i don't mind taking a test i don't mind taking a test or something on arrival or before i take off but i'm i'm not sitting i'm done sitting indoors for 14 days at a time like i'm 
I'm quite free to roam around you're, you're, Istanbul you're, you're, now. Uh, yeah, yeah, you've come so. through that period. See, I haven't really had to quarantine during this whole period. So a bit, it becomes different when, when the carrots dangled in front of you, right? So I would have said the same thing. There's no way I'm going to do quarantining and uh, I don't want to have to go through 14 days. But if there's a, if there's a concrete job on the table uh, and, a, and, a, and a great filming opportunity, then, then you start to think, right, well, could I put up with 14 days either side? It's not ideal. Could I create content during that time? You start to yeah. analyze it a bit different the more concrete the offer becomes. And then it is, obviously got, yeah. Is Cathay Pacific even flying in and out of Hong Kong? Yeah, they are. Um, Where? So there are flights. There are flights. Uh, Beijing, Shanghai, uh, I think Xi'an. Uh, so there are flights going into China. The issue is being a foreign passport holder. So, so Cathay Pacific is flying into China out of Hong Kong just for Chinese passport holders to what? Go back and forth or just going home? Because there's so many Chinese forth, passport as holders. As far as I understand, and they're starting to uh, waive that 14 day quarantine. I think that's the idea is that the next stage is that people going in between back and forth for business uh, will be exempt uh, from having to do that. And China's. You know, they're, they're doing a lot of stuff to do with tracking and to do with uh, health cards so that once you have a green light, you can move freely between certain provinces, as far as I understand. So it, it's getting there. It's just not quite there yet, um, especially for foreign passport holders. So just got to sit tight, basically. Um, and it's a shame because, you know, we both know how amazing it is to film in rural China. Um, and what opportunities there are and what stories to uncover and the kind of people that, that we've met together. Um, and so when, when you can't do that, that can be, that's, that's quite a difficult uh, pill, to, pill to swallow, basically, to, yeah, no, to I know that there are such great stories out there and food. And, yeah. I agree. And, you know, in, in regular times, people in China are wonderful and filming in China is wonderful. In regular times, um, you know, people are very hospitable and very kind and welcoming. But I'm just, I'm a, I'm a little worried, not just about China, but anywhere, about being, you know, a foreigner going in and filming. Um, you know, being like someone not from our town or village. Um, and I'm worried about, you know, whether that hospitality will dry up because I think everyone's that's... just worried about, uh, you know, this virus situation. I mean, it's, it's only conjecture and it's only guesswork trying to work out what it might be like but i'd like to believe that i think considering how strict it is and how difficult it is to get into countries i have a feeling that once you are in it shows that you've passed all necessary requirements um, and i think i think that idea that you're not from here you might have the virus i think i'm hopeful that's not gonna be a kind of prevalent mindset I don't think it will be. I think as long as you can prove, for example, like this health, this health card that proves that you've done all the checks and whatever. If there's some visual proof that says, "Look, I've done this. I'm wearing a mask. I'm, I'm following all procedures that you're following." If we're if we're all following the same procedure, then in theory, there shouldn't be that that issue. Um, so I'd like in to be positive theory. about that one. Yeah, I love I love your positivity. Well, of course, <laughs> you were in you were in Ethiopia, so. At that time, did you sense any kind of feeling of you're a foreigner? I suppose it was a lot more uncertain a couple of months ago. No one even knew what, what, what the no was going was, on. Right? Well, I was filming in the town of Gondar in northern Ethiopia on the border with South Sudan. And even people on the streets would look at us and be like, ah, 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 Corona, Corona, ah, 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 Corona, Corona. And, um, and that was in March. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, you, you, you haven't really heard much about it yourself, so that must be quite confusing. Well, no, I mean, I mean, by then, I'd, like, I think by then we'd heard a lot about it, and that's actually why I wanted to go. Like, I think, you know, people have been asking me on social media and stuff like that, like, why did you go to Ethiopia when the world was going to close down? And I was like, well, I didn't know the world was going to close down when I left. And, mm. and I kind of felt like, I was just being consumed by all this news on a daily basis and all this virus stuff that I, I thought, like, Actually, man, I, I was just like, 
yeah, I was just like, man, 10 days in the mountains is like exactly what I need right now. Like, I don't want to yeah. have to watch the news every single day and listen to all this terrible stuff coming out. And um, so I just, I naively was like, yeah, I mean, I'll just go to Ethiopia and things will be fine. And I remember, I remember someone in my family, I won't say who, but they wrote me back and they're like, oh, you're up in the mountains in Ethiopia. That's probably like the safest place in the world. Because no one thought the airlines would stop flying and no one thought the yeah. borders would ever if close. If you hadn't have moved, can you imagine? If you hadn't have moved, you would have been, you, you could have been up in those mountains for a while. I Think could of the fear. Think of Think the fear. It would have been, it would have been epic. Uh, way too gray nowadays, but it could have been epic. Um, so, so what's like, what, what is life like in Hong Kong at the moment? Like, can you move around freely? Can you get on the ferry and go to central? Can you go shopping? Are all the shopping malls open? Is it easy to get groceries? Like everything is, a, is everything just like a hundred percent back to normal? Yeah, I think yes to all those things, basically, um, with heightened kind of checks and, and control. But yeah, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's basically it. Um, so my day to day, I'm, I'm trying to focus on, on what I can do. We were talking privately earlier about kind of how to create content. And, and one thing you've done so well is to keep these COVID calls up and to, to keep yourself active and on social media. And it's something that I'm not very good at, admittedly. Uh, so I'm trying to treat this like a learning curve. Uh, since the last time we spoke on here, I've uh, completed my pizza oven build, uh, which was a month and a half of lugging stones and learning how to lay bricks and all sorts of different jobs that I never thought I would I would be doing. Uh, um, That's awesome. But yeah, it's quite humbling to to do something you're you're terrible at, right? Um, yeah. And I'm I mean, just a little bit I, less terrible at it. I still your your guitar stuff. Okay, you're I'm still working on that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're not quite at the song level yet, but it's it's coming, and I can't it's play coming. a single chord. So no, but it's I think coming. I think this is what I mean is is around me everything's back to normal or as close to normal as it can be, um, but I've still got the mindset of trying to fill my days with doing things interesting and trying to create content and basically because I can't go out and film and do my normal job it's like right what jobs can I do uh, in the meantime so it's as if as if I was still doing some sort of uh, isolation um, yeah so I've, I've got the pizza making pretty down now I'm making tandoori tonight in the pizza oven which should be interesting that's Just awesome experimenting um got an outdoor kitchen made now so i think this weekend i'm gonna start setting up some tripods and cameras and I basically start teaching people how to cook which is you know what i love to do um and i haven't done for a while i used to i used to have my kitchen out in beijing and i used to teach people how to cook um and you know same with the same with the tv shows i, I just thought like where i am right now i'm in the i'm in the mountains in Lantau, in a beautiful setting. And if I wasn't living here, this would be a location that we'd love to film in. Right. And we'd go out here and we'd set up an outdoor kitchen just like we did in, in our series and in the series I've done in the past. We'd set up an outdoor kitchen and we'd start cooking. So I figure why not try and do that now? Um, yeah. Because I've got, the, I've got the, the means to do it. So, You know what the hardest thing is, Jamie? The hardest thing in the world and and I, I I went to, I suffered from this as well. Is like the problem with you and I is we're used to making really really nice looking content. Like we're used to being in TV shows that look really really good. We've got great cameramen. We've got great editors. We've got great music guys. We've got you know color correction. We got maps. Like we're used to being on TV and having everything around us be like really nice. And the problem with social media and the problem with Instagram Live or the problem with making YouTube videos at home cooking is it's, it's just not going to be that nice. And, and that's just, you just have to, you know, you just have to Terrifying. accept that and hopefully, yeah, and hopefully people will just be interested in, in the quality being taken down a notch, but you still saying interesting stuff and still being entertaining, which you are. So 
I have a feeling, you know, whatever you get up to will be fantastic. Well, wow, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We will. We will see. Follow Jamie's Instagram and see what happens next. Please do. Please do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is 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 your better half back to work? Is she still working? Uh, nothing stopped yeah, on her end. Yeah, she's a vet nurse, so their their practice stays open twenty four hours every day of the year. So wow. So yeah, she's been working the whole way through. Um, yeah, so obviously some industries haven't been as affected. Um, but yeah, I'm just looking forward to getting on a plane and, and like the rest of the world, getting back out there um, and just, you know, telling other people's stories. Yeah. Yeah. The the United Kingdom just came out and, and introduced a, a mandatory 14-day quarantine for people who are arriving in the UK now. So that's... Yeah. Uh, that's a tough one. Um, that was another we'll series. I was, I was meant to be doing 20 episodes in the UK about uh, Chinese food at home. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, one's, that one's shelf. So there's a lot of stuff on the shelf. What about you? What's on the shelf? Are you, are you in pre-production on things? Are you, is your mind, what's your mind? Where's your mind going? Well, in February, I was supposed to film in Colombia. In March, I was supposed to film in uh, Kenya and South Africa. In April, I was supposed to be in Azerbaijan. In May, I was supposed to be in, where was I supposed to be? Maybe Poland, and then June was supposed to be Switzerland. So obviously all of that has kind of been shifted in some way, shape, or form. Um, yeah, I mean, I was filming another series, Season of Extreme Treks for BBC. Um, I managed to sneak in an episode in February in Myanmar. Which yeah. Great. And then my second episode was Ethiopia. And I think we only got any, about a half an episode. So, any potential for filming in, in Turkey? Have you uh, well, thought about well, it that? Just, it just depends on Chad and Jesse. Like, Chad's my director of photography and Jesse's my second camera operator and you know like it, they're both in north america so uh at the moment the world is basically only allowing passport holders of the the country that you're flying to to go anywhere and chad and Isn't Jesse chad both, half turkish no sadly not i thought so as well but no right. neither of them have a turkish passport uh, neither of them neither of them can fly to turkey um and so finding local Finding local? Have you thought about that? Have you? Is this stuff you're exploring, or what's your what's your thoughts on that? No, I don't think I would do extreme treks without Chad or Jesse, just because um, the quality with working with them is so high. And uh, but I'm uh, not not extreme treks. Have you thought about doing anything Turkey based? Is there? I'm is it open I'm actually to go out and do stuff. No, so I can't leave us. I cannot leave Istanbul. Um, but I could film in Istanbul, I suppose. But again, it's like everyone's wearing masks. So what do you do? Um, but we're looking at, I'm looking at getting into Europe in sometime this summer, probably in late July or August. And I will stay in Europe and, uh, and film as much as possible for as long as possible um, until something else comes up. So that's my plan. Yeah, Europe seems plan. to be getting to that, getting to that stage where it's, it's welcome welcoming people like, from other countries. And I, can dr and I can drive everywhere. I can, I can rent a van yeah. with the guys and we can just trek around and uh, shoot stories. And there's a few series that I'm looking at doing beyond extreme treks. Um, yeah, so we great. might shoot a, shoot a few pilots for that. But just um, just try to get back moving and get back I tell filming you, again. It felt, it felt so good. I mean, talking about how frustrating it, it was not being able to go film this series uh, this month, but just to get on a call and talk about something that you know and just feel like, yeah, this is my job. You know, sure. I haven't had that feeling in six months. Um, so just talking to a production company and talking to directors and, and talking about the vision for the show and, and how, how, how they see the show going and how we what we focus on and what we, you know my views on food in Hunan province and and you know just just stuff that I'm comfortable talking about you know you can 
I'm sure you feel the same. You can spend only so long faffing about with beat drums and guitars before you're like, I just need to do something that I'm good at. Um, yeah. The the guitar experience is actually depressing, but I'm I'm getting there. Yeah, no, it is. There is a depressing element to it. I I'm loving the pizza oven. I'm loving all this outdoor kitchen stuff. It is related to what I do, but at the same time, I'm like laying bricks or filming. I know which one I prefer. Um, sure. So, so yeah, no, you, you know, even just you know, I had a call this afternoon with a production company. Just having having calls with production companies and with people in the industry. It just feels so reassuring to to be like, yeah, that's my skill set. Um, yeah. And it just, if there's any positive, it kind of just makes you realize that you're doing the job that you want to do. And the sooner Absolutely. you can get back to it, the more you're going to appreciate it once you're back at it. Um, the, the first time that camera rolls uh, for both of us, I'm sure we're going to feel a, a real sense of relief that that we're doing what we love again. Um, I hope I, I hope I remember how to talk to the camera. Right. Uh, this is my practice. This is the only reason why I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> exactly. This is training, training for when the world yeah. goes back to normal. Um. So look. Uh. Yes. Yesterday was the second second year anniversary of Anthony Bourdain's uh, passing. Um. And uh, you know he he was a chef and a television host and producer presenter. You're a celebrity chef, a television host, producer, and presenter. You know, did you ever watch any of his shows? Did you ever did you ever like watching any of his content? Was there anything that stuck out that you really appreciated that he brought to the world? Yeah, definitely. I think I think anyone in our industry, not even on the cooking side, just in the TV making side of things, you know, you have to have respect for the kind of shows that he put out there. Um, I grew to like his stuff. I have to say it wasn't because I was so used to enjoying more British produced stuff. Um, I've always, always tended to watch more British stuff. So when I first started watching Bourdain, I found it a little bit uh, just not what I was used to. But the older sure. I got and the more I watched, the more I appreciated his storytelling. Um, he was a really good storyteller. Um, yeah. And yeah, I just like how free he was with his kind of presenting style completely it seemed on camera at ease um just being himself um yeah i think nothing to hide skill that, yeah exactly and that's a skill that you know we can always learn from um uh, you can tell good tv presenters um just watching them and, and feeling like oh you know i would hang out with this person um you know he's strong strong will strong mind um and yeah obviously from the food perspective like i've i've read one of his books um yeah just just a really interesting person by the sounds of it um and his last yeah. episode was in hong kong um yeah last full episode and, uh, yeah i haven't actually got around to watching that i, I feel a bit weird watching it uh, but mm. i know i do um i do food tours in hong kong and one of the restaurants we go to, there's a picture of Anthony Bourdain sitting there. Um, it's a really good restaurant. Um, and yeah, I just it's such a shame. Um, but yeah, his his storytelling and the the way his shows kind of the narrative. You know, that's that's something that we're always looking at. Is how do you how do you have an how do you have an arch? How do you have a story arch in the show? And how do you maintain that story? And his episodes just flowed very comfortably. Um, yeah. Actually, I've been watching a pretty good show. I just started watching it two days ago. Um, Expedition I Asia. It. No, I don't like the host of that one. Um, no, there's um, <laughs> um, yeah. no, it's uh, somebody feed Bill. Have you heard about it? No, I haven't heard about this. It's uh, you know, Netflix usually gives me a load of crap to watch. I've I've kind of gone off Netflix really. Um, it's just so much content that I don't want to watch on there, but it yeah. kind of came up and I tried it and yeah, it's really good. He's the, I want to say he's the Everybody Loves Raymond uh, writer. Okay. Something like that. Um, anyway, it's him going around the world, going to different cities. Um, and he's a funny guy. He's very humble. 
Um, and he's a really good storyteller. Um, and so watching it 